Hello everyone! We're so happy that you are joining us online today. So tonight we have an amazing word brought by an amazing person, my grandpa, Randy Willie. And my name is Brooklyn Malkin, and this is my cousin Scarlett. Isn't she beautiful? She's so beautiful. And actually today we have something very special to us. These are our arrows. They have our name and our birthday on them. And Scarlett, could you tell us a little bit about them? Yes. Hi everyone, my papa gave us these arrows about a year ago, mm -hmm. along with a really good word. Yeah, we were all filled with the Holy Spirit. It was really amazing. This arrow tells us how we shoot our pur purpose forward and mm -hmm. to re really? rely Yes. Re Realize rely that you can chase after your calling in Jesus' name. So now Scarlett is going to pray for us. And so you can go right ahead, Scarlett. Dear Lord, I pray that you'll open up everybody's ears to listen to the word tonight mm -hmm. and that we'll just shoot yeah. forward and it will open up your heart, our hearts mm -hmm. to you, Lord. And I would just pray that you'll just rejoice us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Such a good prayer. And so now we have the honor of welcoming up our grandpa, Randy Willie, as he's going to bring us an amazing word on strongholds. Really good to be here tonight. I want to thank the girls for introducing me. And and that was a very meaningful time when I was just got this urge when I was out at the farm to make these arrows and put their names on them. And then the Lord gave me this word to speak to them and and to enforce that they were arrows in our quiver to be shot forth. And while I was making those arrows, I don't know why, I made an extra one. And I thought we were all done. But last week, my daughter, Jacqueline and Trevor, who you've met in the course here a few weeks ago, they had another one. And how wonderful to get a Monroe. And I had the privilege of putting her name and birth date on that arrow. Uh, I had an extra one that we hadn't anticipated. We're so excited about that. And we are all arrows to be shot forth. If you've been coming to the class and you understood that there was a work of the cross, the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus that had power, that it had purpose, that it has destiny, that there's a, a passion that was within Jesus Christ to see us set free. And he gives us the tools of the kingdom to do it, to walk it out. I, I got to read this for you in Ephesians 6. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord starting at verse 10. Be empowered through the union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which is boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of the heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, contending with only physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. So right now, we're going to get that armor. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place, stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity and the moral rectitude and the right standing with God and having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with a firm footed stability and promptness and a re re readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Lift up over all the covering shield of faith the saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit wields, which is the word of God. Pray at all times on every occasion and every season in the spirit with all manner of prayer and entreaty to the end, keep alert 
and watch the strong purpose and perseverance interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Tonight, there's going to be a lot of scripture. Last week, we decided to make declarations, and we had a prayer of unity that I believe going forward, we're going to see the answer to that prayer. Those of you that were here that night, you sensed the move of the Holy Spirit in that room. There was a unity, and there was a spirit of agreement. Jesus answers prayers of agreement. Understand that we are in a battle, and we're going to go forward, and we're going to win. We are on the winning side. Um, years and years ago, uh, my older brother was a salesman, and he worked for a major Canadian corporation. And he had, had a territory that was traditionally not their best turf. And yet he went there and turned it into a successful territory. And he won a trip to Montreal, and he got to meet the presidents and vice presidents, and they had a banquet, and he was seated beside the vice president. And during the evening, uh, this vice president just got grosser and grosser and more crude with his comments, and, and, and finally he turned. I guess he realized Warren wasn't enjoying it. And he says to, to, to him, he says, you don't like me very much, do you? And my brother decided to speak truth to him. And he said, no, I don't think it's that. I think you've had way too much to drink. Well, the guy looked at him and said, you can go to. And Warren thought, well, there goes my job. But at any rate, about two minutes later, this guy turned back stone cold sober and he said, no, you are absolutely right. I have had too much to drink and I've embarrassed myself and I apologize. And the rest of the evening, they had wonderful conversation about families. They exchanged Christmas cards. But there's a scripture about that. John 8 says, the truth will set you free. John 16, the truth will guide you. First Timothy says, truth will give you knowledge. See, what we've got once you get saved is that you have these old mindsets over here and you have a renewed mind over here. And what you're trying to do is get this thing purified, this old mindset thing over here cleansed so that you will have a renewed mind. But you're battling some things. In the old mindsets, there's things like lies, false information, demonic influence, abuse, abuse. Bible says there's even something called doctrines of demons. But over here, when you have the renewed mind, it comes from a born-again experience, and truth has to come to bear on, on your mind so that it becomes cleansed, and you get that, what it's called, a renewed mind. Um, Elijah is a great example. He was a powerful prophet of the Lord. Uh, he went up and he challenged uh, the king to a contest that... Uh, their prophets could try to call down fire on their altars of Baal, and all the priests were there, uh, some 450 of them there, and another 400 of another god there's priest. I mean, it was a lot of people there. They're up on this mountain. And then uh, as the day wore on, and they, these priests, they were cutting themselves, and they were trying to call down fire, and, and he would holler up, and he would holler things to them, you know, kind of like a heckler at a at a football game, uh, he, he became that perfect uh, voice against evil. And at the end of the day, they had to give up. And he said, okay, now pour water all over this altar. And in a very short prayer, he called down fire in a prayer. And the altar came down and consumed everything. They sacrificed the wood, the, the, uh, the stones, everything. It just literally called down fire in the name of his God Almighty. And uh, so we think this is an incredible man. And he killed all those prophets of Baal. He's on a roll. But a very few days after that, some old mindsets started to creep in. And he found himself 
questioning and in fear of Jezebel, that she had said, well, she, you know, he killed her prophets, and he, strangely enough, she didn't like him. And uh, he realized that, and he knew he was threatened. But this is how easy fear can come back into your life and cause you trouble in the future. Fear of failure, fear of, of the enemies of your life, fear of debt, fear of financial loss, fear of sickness. All of these things can start to come in. Almost everything that I'm going to teach tonight has a real strong foundation in fear and how you deal with it and how you overcome fear. We must impact all thinking with truth, absolute truth. Use truth to overcome the enemy. Overcome the past using keys of the kingdom. Now, as I told you at the beginning, this course was based out of a crucible time in my life where I was very seriously going to cleanse some things out of my life. I was going to deal with them, and I brought this course out. And so these, I'm calling it a step program, and I'm, I know there's other 12-step programs, but somehow, by the Holy Spirit, I ended up with 12 steps. So here we are again, 12 steps. And the first one to begin with is that you must have hope. Hope that things will change in your life. Hope is that answer that can, it's like having a foundation stone that you can build on. Uh, you can't even get saved actually without hope. You got to hope that this is the God that can save you and change the way you are here. Uh, Jeremiah 29 says, hope in your final outcome. Hebrews 11 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So uh, you work down through the, the next step being having faith. So by faith, you, you literally submit yourself to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, this most often, we could hand you would put up your hand in church. You'd come to an altar. You'd somebody would lead you in a in a prayer, and you'd be able to turn your life up to the onto the lordship of Jesus Christ. Ask Jesus in your heart to be the Lord of your life. Put him on the throne. Remember that throne right here. No longer living for self, but for the one who willingly gave his life for us. Even when we were ugly in our sins, Jesus gave us beauty for ashes. Find somebody. Find somebody to pray with. If you haven't, you know, uh, the last uh, four weeks, uh, virtually every night we've had somebody give their heart to the Lord. And it's, I'm going to miss not having the audience in front of me this week where we can, we can see responses, immediate responses. But let me know. Send a note to the, the church. Let us know what's happening. Truth is the next thing that we have to get now. So now you're standing there. You've accepted Jesus into your heart. and He's going to be your Lord of your life. So now you have to bring truth to bear and not half-truths. John 8 says, truth will set you free. John 16, remember, the spirit of truth. The truth-giving spirit comes. He will guide you into all truth. The truth must impact all thinking, not half-truths. Use it like a weapon. It's got something in your hand. There's truth in your hand like a sword. And you have to literally cut off those things that you recognize. They don't fit with a Christian lifestyle. They don't fit with an overcomer's lifestyle. James 15 says, confess to one another your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray for one another. So you should find somebody, if you're, if you're struggling, find somebody that you can confide in, but make sure that these are trustworthy people. Your sins should not go further than that conversation. Then you can pray together and see yourself as an, as an overcomer and overcome these things by this scripture, that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart for the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. 
Praise the Lord. The first thing in Ephesians is to put on the belt of truth. In Ephesians 6, we just read. Step four, take some action. You know, I remember years ago, somebody making the statement that he understood about his uh, situation, that this was in his lineage, that there was adultery and things like that in his lineage. And, and I, he never did anything about it, and it trapped him at a later date. So you got to take action when you know that, that you've brought truth to bear. Philippians 2 says, Therefore, my dear ones, as you've always obeyed my suggestions, so now not only with enthusiasm you would show in my present, but much more because I am absent. Work out, cultivate, carry out to the goal, fully complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling with a self-distrust, with serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Jesus Christ. Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectively at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire, both to will and to work for his good pleasure, satisfaction, and delight. I've reached into the word of God tonight, and I know I'm giving you a heavy load, so you need to read these scriptures over again. You're going to I saw no other way than to take the powerful word of God and put it into this particular night because it's life-giving. Now I'm going to share something with you. This is the gospel according to Randy Willey. And it's really hilarious because I ran into a lady that took this course almost 15, 16 years ago. I ran into her in the mall the other day. And she got talking and she said, you, you know what? I don't know what I would have done without the three-second rule. <laughs> so the gospel according to Randy, I believe that, the, that our Holy Spirit gives you three seconds to make a choice when you're going to sin. That three seconds is when you maybe have to take your hand back from a, a doorknob that I'm going to go in and buy some alcohol, going to go and get some pornography. Uh, I'm going to speak out angrily to my spouse. There's three seconds where you can pause before you hit that computer key. Or you're sitting in front of a TV and you, you know where this is going, that you ought not to be looking at this. You can grab that remote and you have three seconds to turn it off, turn away. Don't listen to this, that this is not going to fill you with anything good and it's going to be contrary. But there's a warning also with that three second rule. If you turn that doorknob, if you hit that computer key, if you continue to watch that TV screen, the Holy Spirit is like, it goes like, <gasps> and he draws back from you and he doesn't step through that and slap you and, and shake you and grab you. He just steps back. And then you'll go through a season of just remorse, sickness. Why would I do this to the one I love? This is, this is the Jesus. This is the one that saved me, died on a cross for me, gave his life for me, shed his blood for me. And you go through this season of, of, of repentance and, and you get back again. So seize that three seconds like it's a gift because it is from the Holy Spirit. Step five, know your enemy. Listen to this. John 10 says, I am the door. Jesus, anyone who enters in through me will be saved, will live. He will come in and he will go out free and will find pasture. For the thief, Satan comes only in order to listen, steal, kill, 
and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance, full till it overflows. I am the good shepherd who risks and lays down his own life for the sheep. Understand that Satan is a formidable foe. He's, I, I, he, he's a very formidable foe. Uh, more intelligent than, than, than you and I. He's, he's, if we don't have the power of Jesus Christ and the word of God using his principles and the blood of Jesus, we're going to lose in this battle. But we are placed above him when you stay in God, when you stay in the word. Um, there's another thing in the word I want to just share with, with people that are, that maybe even haven't made the step towards getting saved yet that are watching tonight. There's only joy, according to the word of God, there's only joy in sin for a season. So if that is summer, fall, winter, and spring, maybe if you're in Canada, there's a long winter, but that would be the longest of the seasons where you would have joy in sin. And you could be pursuing the joy of that sin for the rest of your life when it'll never come again. You know, I, I, I met a man that had pretty much lost everything. His, his farm was broken down and and we were going to have a Thanksgiving dinner at this house, and and he he looks over at me, and he he's got a little he's got a little Mickey of whiskey, and and he's he's wanting to pour me a glass, and and he's going, yeah, you want a little shot? As if he was 16 years old, and out behind the barn doing it for the first time, and yet he's still trying to find that joy that he had there when he wasted his life with alcohol and it took his life, took it away, his purpose, his callings. And you will never, I, I know because I've dealt with ad addictions, pe addicted people with drugs, they can never get that first high back again. They'll spend the rest of their life chasing it. So you've got to have something called no rules extreme warfare. You have to cut off what you have to cut off. You have to deal with it. You have to set the boundaries. And if, when you burn that ground behind you, you can never go back. So if you got to leave all your friends, I had to. I had all my friends, they had to leave them. They went behind. They weren't going to follow me anymore when I wasn't buying in the bars anymore. They didn't want to go there. That's where we, you know, to, to where I was intending to go. Rip out the enemy, number six, to the root. Uh, there's a very interesting scripture. Now, we talked about this being the book from beginning to end. Now, it was a gifted book, but one of the things that's kind of uh, funny in this book is that it was given numbers to make it easier for us to, to find and then verses and numbers in there. And every now and then, I believe there was kind of a mistake in how they, they did those numberings. And one of them is that they split a sentence between two different verses. So if you weren't real careful, you would miss that that, well, that was all one part. So Hebrews 12 says, exercise foresight and be on watch to look after one another to see that no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace, his unmerited favor and spiritual blessing in order that no root of bitterness, rancor, bitterness, hatred, shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment. This is, this is obviously an enemy. It's a, with, we're not, but listen what happens. And many become contaminated and defiled by it. And what happens when they get defiled? This, is a, this has happened many, many times. It's happened in the church that no one may become guilty of sexual vice. So how did we get from a bitterness and anger to a sexual vice? 
Well, we did. The word is true. It does not lie. And it, it seems to happen over and over again. You'll have somebody that gets extremely bitter with somebody else, and the, the next thing you have a, uh, an adulterous affair. They leave the church. They go somewhere, and they get involved in what they shouldn't get involved with. But it was all caused by a root of bitterness. Um, the cure. The cure. So now we, we've had the sin. What's the cure? Repentance. Forgiveness. Even when you are right. You know, we could stand in our own righteousness and be angry and bitter right there just as well. And we, we weren't, you know, we weren't wrong. And people have had to bear some terrible wrongs. But forgiveness will come in <coughs> and it can cause you to be an overcomer. Even when you're right, they are wrong. Wash yourself in Jesus' blood and the word. Bind your mind and your heart, will, and emotions to the spirit of Jesus, who was totally righteous, but died a death on the cross for you. Dig deep. I remember my mother would teach us how to dig dandelions. And you could scoop the top off, but a week later, there'd be another dandelion up there. You had to dig way down and get all the root, and then we had to pour salt in that hole, too, to get them out of the front lawn. Reconciliation and restoration, step seven. Big words, reconciliation and restoration. Second Corinthians says, It was God in Christ reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but reconciling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation, of the restoration to favor. So here we have a God who's working really, really hard all the time for you. So this isn't a one-sided affair. He performed a, a perfect work on the cross, and he continues to make that work come alive. Um, I'm asking you to read Romans 12 as homework. It works with step six. So when you're doing and de dealing deeply with roots of bitterness, ripping out the enemy to the root, we have to really work hard to get a reconciliation and restoration. What Satan has destroyed, God renews the mind, the emotions, health, dependence, finances, relationships, it'll go on and on what God can do. We become a construction site, but it benefits all the other buildings under construction around us. Now, there's a kind of an odd thing that can happen in this, though. Uh, I know I tell Warren Willie stories, but he's he was a great brother and is a great brother, and he was also, as a pastor, he would re did some beautiful construction work. Well, he had this big two-story home in, in Portland, Oregon, one of the, uh, like a heritage-type home. And one day he noticed in the upstairs bathroom that the tap was not working too good. It was dripping. And he thought, well, I'll replace the taps. Well, to do that, these old taps, he had to take the sink out. And he goes, uh-oh. And he could see that the pipes were all corroded, almost closed, <coughs> the water line, and so was the drain. So he had to keep going down, 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 down. And finally, he was jackhammering the sidewalk at the front street. And he had to replace all of that. Sometimes that's exactly, you will find things in your life that you keep having to get deal with and continue to reach that perfection, that aim, that, that target of cleaning up your life. Um, we're only going to be perfect in Jesus. Yeah. That's the truth of it. But we want to be, we want to like be like a husband and wife that really want to have a good marriage, a really good marriage, and communication and love between... And that's what you want to have with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Number eight, binding the good things to yourself. Matthew 16, 
We talked about that last week. He'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, must be whatever is already bound in heaven, and whatever you loose, declare lawful on earth, must be what is already loosed on earth. Matthew 18, you can read that one. Also, binding your mind, thoughts, and life to the will of God. Bind your days and your nights. Binding yourself to the destiny Jesus has for you. Binding yourself to the blood of Jesus for cleansing. Completeness. Remember the blood. Completeness. Nothing missing. Wholeness. Nothing broken. Bind yourself to everything good in the word of God. We're loosing bad things from your life. From last week, we learned how to do that and work in prayer over people that you want to see changed in, into the likeness of Jesus Christ. The definition of loose is to loosen, break up, destroy, dissolve, unloose, melt, put off, break, wreck, shatter, rend, and tear. These are words of spiritual warfare. So loose off yourself, addictions evil imaginations, abuse, wrong associations, soul ties. And we're going to get into that more in the next couple of weeks. Loose everything evil from your life. Begin in prayer. Loose the bad stuff. stuff. Step out for Jesus in freedom. Number 10 is total surrender. Galatians 2 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We have to surrender to that kind of love. Close doors of access in your life. If you have to, run Say, run like heck. Run! And you think, really? Flee, it says, youthful lust. Shun, in 2 Timothy, shun youthful lust and flee from them and aim at and pursue righteousness, all that is good, right living, conformity to the will of God in thought, word, and deed. Aim at and pursue faith, love, peace, and fellowship with all Christians. Remove all availability to drugs, alcohol, gambling, pornography, cigarettes, prescription drugs, overeating. All of these things, you can, you can really cleanse your life. People will help you. We recently had in the church here on a marriage course how to, how to keep your computer and your cell phones clean. And there's people that will help you with that in the church. so that you, But you can literally... Uh, you know, a, a real key for me is I don't buy cheesies because if I buy cheesies, I'm going to eat cheesies. So I don't buy them. Okay? Gospel according to Randy time again. Yeah. Over the years, I, I had worked in with very large groups of people that were heavily addicted when we were down the lower mainland uh, near Vancouver, and they had come right off of Hastings Street and areas like that. We worked in the prisons. And one of the things on their 12-step program nights that I, I realized is that we always had to take a break. We always had to go, they'd go outside and they would have a puff, and the little tin can would get filled up with cigarette butts. <coughs> now, some of these guys would have their four five, six-year cakes where they'd been off of cocaine, heroin, major drugs, alcohol. And they'd go outside and have... And I noticed that they seldom got past five, and the next thing they were back down on heroin in Vancouver. And, and I started to realize that it's like a gate... The cigarettes were like their first gate. So if they had closed that gate, then they could progress to closing these more serious gates and they could get some ground. So if, if you're having struggling with, with, with addictions, start with the cigarettes and make sure that door is closed. 
always make sure that the gate is closed so that it doesn't reopen because it is addictions that's a problem. It's not the heroin. It's not the. It's it's always that gate, like a door. So be careful to do that. Um, you know, when I was 18 years old, I'd been saved for about six months. And I was driving back from Leduc from a prayer meeting one night to Edmonton. And it was a cold winter night. And I was just praying in the car as I was driving my 64 Chevy two-door post car. Like that means a lot. <laughs> And I'm driving along. I'm a young man. I'm struggling with some sin. And I said, Lord, I, I just want to be cleaner. And this was the first time that the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And all I heard in that car was Psalm 119, 6, 9. And I thought, what was that? And I knew it wasn't me. I knew it was, it was something else. Some, there was just like a voice in, that came. And you will get to know the shepherd's voice, the Bible says. But it was the first time. And I, I pulled off on the, the main highway there and got off on the shoulder. And I grabbed my Bible and I turned on the light and I started reading. And it says in that scripture, now remember what I'd been just praying. How do I clean up my life? I want to get closer. And, and the word there says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways but by taking heed to the word of God? And I have been a student of this word since that night. And, and it has grown in me and it's a passion within me to have the word of God in my life. I cannot live without it. I love the voice of the Holy Spirit. Positive confession. Step 11, Isaiah 57 says, Peace, peace to him who is far off, both Jew and Gentile, to him who is near, says the Lord. I create the fruit of his lips, and I will heal him, make his lips blossom anew with speech in thankful praise. Philippians says, For it is God which worketh in Randy Willie, both the will and, yeah, it says that, both to will and to do is good pleasure. Isaiah 10 says, And it will depart from Randy Willie's shoulders and the yoke from off his neck. Isaiah 54 says, Randy Willie shall establish himself in righteousness, right standing and conformity with God's will and order. Randy Willie shall be far even from the thought of oppression and destruction for I will have no fear from terror and it will not come near me are you getting the point I told you earlier I was going to give you a key this is it put your name in there fill your name in the blank when it's we're reading the scripture and it will come home to you and it'll become a reality we've got to strengthen your true positions step 12 We've had a positive confession. We don't. We we moved forward. Now we're getting into step twelve. Strengthen your true positions. Ephesians six is exactly that. The scripture that we've gone full round. Now we're back to Ephesians six about putting on the whole armor of God, knowing who your enemy is, and being equipped. Be accountable both to God and man in your Christian walk and endeavors. Walk in new, real liberty. John 8 says, He who the Son sets free is free indeed. So when I wrote this course, I was living in Calgary, checking out this new job, and I was living in my RV trailer. And every night I, I would go for long prayer walks. And... Uh, I'll go along the Bow River. And one night I had just on t-shirt, shorts, running shoes, walking along. The, it was a sunny night, beautiful. And all of a sudden, something stung me sort of on the back of my neck. 
And I thought, what is that? And, and I turned around and right behind me was a massive, massive dust storm that was coming towards me. Dark black clouds, huge swirling winds. I saw the big trees along the river just bowing down and I had just got hit by the first of one of those, those airborne missiles coming at me. And so I thought, well, I better get back to my trailer quick. And, and so I turned around and I started walking back and there was this great big rock. Somebody might think you're crazy. You know, all the guys we used to say with white coats would come and get you. But I saw this big rock on the side of the river. And it was one of those points in my life where I made a declaration that I had had enough. And I climbed up on that rock in that wind and a storm. I felt like one of those prophets of old. You know, we see the picture of Moses holding out his staff. And I began to make declarations. And I hollered out that I'm going to be established on the rock, Christ Jesus. That I'm going to line up with the chief cornerstone. That as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I was screaming and shouting these things as declarations as I stood upon the rock. I shouted that my generation to generation to a thousand generations will serve the Lord. I made statements about the old prophets. They used to say over and over again that they're going to run out a line that they might follow it like a plumb line. That they knew where they were going. I said, Lord, run out a line for that I can follow it. I'd encourage every one of you to have one of those experiences. The truth of the matter is, those things began to happen, began to happen, and are still happening. So that epiphany that night, a meeting with God and declaring on a solid rock that there was going to be change. I'm just going to ask Janelle to come up and... and and she will speak to you. Thank you for coming and listening tonight. And all of you that are new listening, just want to thank you for coming online and being with us tonight. Amen. I'm going to pick up from that last point, change. And tonight, if you've listened and something has broken and, and struck a chord in your heart, in your life, in your conscience, um, if the Holy Spirit's been dealing with some things while you've been listening to this message, well, let's, let's take it a step further tonight. Let's not just stop tonight with, with just knowledge. Let's put the knowledge into action tonight. Would you do that with me? I know this is different. I know we're not face to face tonight, but I'm looking right at you. Wherever you're sitting tonight in your living room, at your dining room table, if you're in bed tonight even, because you just are so broken. If you're, if wherever you are in your home or if you're driving in a car or sitting in a coffee shop, I challenge you to just put your phone away right now. I challenge you to open up your heart and your spirit right now and let's deal with some things tonight, once and for all. I love that we can go boldly before the throne of God and we can lay it down. And I love that he takes it and he forgets it. And so tonight, let's, let's move on in freedom. Let's move on. And the first step we learned tonight is, is we know is the first step is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. We don't ever want to leave a moment in any of our services at home church. We don't want to leave the moment without inviting those who are watching tonight to uh, make Jesus the Lord of their life. So let's start there tonight. Put your hand on your heart. Lord Jesus, just repeat after me, Jesus. I make the final decision. I make the final choice tonight to give up my past, to give up my sin, to give up my fear, to give up my bondage, and to make you, Jesus, Lord of my life to make you Lord of my mind, Lord in my emotions, Lord over my choices, Lord over my decisions. God, I give you that Lordship in my life. What I repent, I repent 
for the things I've done, the things that have held me in shame. I repent and give it to you, and I know you are able to forgive and to free me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You should be clapping wherever you are. Amen. God's done it. And so I left last night, or last week, sorry, with this, with this statement, and I want to read it again to you. Strongholds are vision exterminators. The first point um, my dad made tonight was hope. And isn't that the thing that the enemy would want to rob from us the most? Our hope, our future. You know, if you're struggling tonight with a hope mindset, if, you're, if you feel stuck, trapped, depressed, if you can't even find a lack of clarity, if you're fuzzy, do you know that feeling where you're just like, I can't figure out what's wrong with me, but something's not right. If you don't even have emotion, you know, sometimes we get so far stuck in hopelessness that we don't even feel it anymore. It's become what we're, what's natural to us. And that isn't what God wants for us. In fact, that's a stronghold in your life. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, The God of this age, Satan, not God with a capital G, Satan has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Here's how these strongholds start. And this is what we need to deal with. This is what you need to seek God for this week. This is what you need to this is where you need to find someone to agree with you. If you're stuck in hopelessness, you know, it, it sometimes it comes through wounds, disappointment, hurt, lies, inaccurate ideas about God, right? Bad scripture interpretation, pride distorted ideas of how God sees us. Remember the idol in our mind. Man, that's, that's got to come down. That's a stronghold. Getting rid of your stronghold is going to require some intentionality this week. You're going to have to be intentional about the thoughts running around in your mind. You're going to have to be intentional about what you read, what you watch on TV, what you listen to. You're going to have to be intentional about your conversations. Guard your mouth. Sometimes it's better to say nothing than to say something at all. Guard your mind. Guard, guard what, what you're putting in your spirit. Guard what you're accepting as truth. And decide only that the truth for me is the word of God. The truth for me is his word. What he says. Not, you know, I thought that was a good point tonight about, we read that scripture, self-trust. Whoa. You know, we, get, we say that a lot. Just trust yourself. No, no, no. I'll be honest with you right now. I don't trust myself. You know who I trust? I trust the power of the Holy Spirit. I trust this Holy Spirit speaking in my life because he can only speak truth. And I'm telling you all this tonight because I want you to put this word into action this week. It's time to move out of the things that have held us back hold us down, and the things that are going to affect our future. And next week, we're going to talk about generational curses. So let's get ready. Let's get our spirits ready. Let's, let's clean the table. Let's clean the house. Shut all the doors and windows and get ready for breakthrough. And so tonight, would you just stand to your feet with us wherever you are? I love doing this when we're live because there's a, there's a position you need to take tonight. Stand to your feet tonight and declare this song with us. Ready? With all of your voices. Here we go. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. Yes, I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. You're gonna 
you turn off your laptop or TV and or your phone and go something happened something's shifted something's changing it's time it's time church it's time for the church to be the hope of the world and it starts in us the hope of Jesus has got to start in us and so go and go in peace go in victory this week walk it out don't give up. It's not going to be easy, <laughs> but you can do it. You can do it. The battle is his and he's fighting with you. So be blessed in Jesus name. And we will see you next week for finding freedom, generational curses. Amen. Amen.